Hi there, my fellow YouTubians. Um, as it turns out, I got about seven new uh, subscribers this weekend since I posted a, a video on Thursday. Um, thanks very much for your interest. I appreciate that. That's that's excellent. Uh, I am um, less than 25 people away from uh, hitting 200 subscribers. So that's very exciting. I don't know what I'll be doing uh, for that time, but I'll be doing something special. I've gotten a lot of requests for very specific uh, videos um, over the weekend, and I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to do them all. Generally, I do either the ones that I'm planning to do, or if someone wins one of my contests, I will do a video for them. Um, a lot of people have requested customized videos, and I just don't know whether or not I'm gonna be able to do them all, because there, there are other things I'm sort of, that are sort of occupying my time right now. Um, so if I don't get to every one of the requests that you uh, guys submit, uh, I do apologize, but I hope you understand that uh, I can't do it all. Um, <clears throat> One of the people uh, who actually won my contest is a fellow who goes by the name Eyewitness911 here on YouTube. And uh, for his prize video, he asked me to do something a little different. He asked me to review a trailer. Uh, now, those of you who are aware, of course, that Harry Potter uh, opened this weekend uh, probably are also aware of the bunch of new trailers that came out this uh, past week as well. And that's because all kinds of movie companies that have big movies opening up next year want their trailers in front of Harry Potter so that everyone will see them. Uh, and who could blame them for that? Lots of people are going to be seeing Harry Potter this weekend. Um, or will have seen it by the time this is posted. It'll be, what, Monday when I post this? So, yeah. I'm doing it the night before, as usual. Um, so, a few of these I've seen, uh, and some of them I've liked. Um, uh, Eyewitness 911 want me to, to do uh, a review of the Red Riding Hood trailer, which of course is a uh, sort of an update of a Little Red Riding Hood, even though it doesn't take place in contemporary times. It takes place mm, 1500, 1400 something or other um, in Europe. This is, I don't really get this from the trailer. I, I did some research on it because I wanted to know the name of the group that did the song in the trailer, which is very good. Um, I have the uh, link basically to the article that I read up on and also a link to the uh, trailer itself so you can hear for yourself. Apparently um, a band, a Swedish band recorded this song, but it isn't on one of their albums. It is something that they wrote and recorded especially for the film and it will actually be performed live during a celebration scene uh, within the film itself. So there's that to look forward to. Um, the photography in this movie is very, very striking. Um, it's a, a you know, really great looking movie uh, and particularly when Red comes along with her bright, and I mean bright red cloak, uh, it's, uh, it really does stand out. And of course, Red is played by Amanda Seyfried. Um, who is in Dear John and Mamma Mia, uh, among other stuff, Jennifer's Body, uh, Mean Girls. The first movie I saw her in was Mean Girls. Um, she had a, a small part in Veronica Mars some years ago. You know, she's, she's been doing a lot of stuff lately. Uh, and uh, I will go and see pretty much anything that she's in <laughs> because she is so utterly delectable. Um, she's a decent actress, I think. It's kind of hard to tell because I'm too busy drooling when I watch her. But, you know, um, yeah, I think she's, she's not terrible, which is more than I can say for other actresses because sometimes their bad acting is actually a distraction. I'm not distracted when she's acting, so that tells me that it's good. It just, it's kind of hard to tell, but I think she's okay. Um, she plays Red, and she is the main character, of course, and she uh, lives in this little village that has been beset upon by a werewolf. A werewolf who becomes human, of course, the rest of the time. Now, this makes for an interesting uh, problem because it's like one of those movies where the killer is amongst the main characters, only this time it isn't, you know, uh, uh, it, it's a wolf rather than just a, a psychopath. Um, so that means that the grandma could be the werewolf, literally. As you recall in Little Red Riding Hood, the wolf tries to seduce Red as she is going uh, to grandma's house. So it runs ahead and uh, dispatches grandma and dresses in her clothes and then waits for her. Now, this could mean that um, the grandma character actually turns out to be the wolf. So the wolf is literally hiding inside the character rather than simply wearing the costume, uh, which I thought would be kind of cool. Um, however, there is also the possibility that Gary Oldman um, is the werewolf, uh, even though Gary Oldman is not actually one of the uh, citizens of the village. Uh, one of the residents of the village. He is from the outside. He's a professional werewolf hunter, and he comes in to help them solve their werewolf problem. Um, now, Gary Oldman, of course, has made a, a, a big uh, change in his career lately. Uh, the past few years, he's now been playing more good guys than bad guys. He's 
played lots and lots of bad guys and psychopaths during his career. Um, and after playing Lucius Malfoy in a couple of the uh, Harry Potter movies, no, not Lucius Malfoy, uh, uh, Severus, Cyrus, uh, Sirius, right, sorry, Sirius. Uh, he's a good guy in the Harry Potter. And he also plays Commissioner Gordon in the new Batman movies, and he is a good guy in that as well. But prior to them, he played lots and lots of uh, bad guys uh, and villains. Air Force One, he was a Russian hijacker. Um, in True Romance, one of his most memorable roles, he played uh, a, uh, a, uh, a white guy who, who tries to talk Rastafarian, uh, and he's a drug dealer and a pimp. It's one of my favorite performances by him. And uh, another good one is State of Grace. Uh, in which he plays um, one member of an Irish mob in New York City. He's terrific in that movie. I've liked him for a long, long time. Um, in this movie, he's wearing bright purple. And when you contrast that against the bright red cloak that Amanda Seyfried is wearing, it looks like the costume designer is sort of setting up the protagonist-antagonist relationship between the two by color-coding their costumes, whereas everyone else is wearing brown, gray, black, white, you know, muted colors, whereas they're the only two that are wearing bright primary colors. Um, but I could be totally wrong about this. He is, after all, not a resident, and apparently the uh, werewolf is a resident in their little village. So that means it could be one of the two guys Amanda Seyfried is seeing, or it could be the Billy Burke character. Um, I don't know what his relationship is with her, but Billy Burke, of course, played a Bella Swan's father in the Twilight movies. Um, it could be Julie Christie, the grandmother. Uh, it could be Lucas Haas. I have a feeling that people will look at Lucas Haas with suspicion first because he is not the handsome, uh, sort of clean-cut guy, clean-cut type that the other two guys are, so they might look at him with suspicion. But then they will divert suspicion to several other characters before finally, of course, suspecting the person who actually, or, or, or finding out who the, the werewolf actually is. This is the way it goes with movies like this. I, what I think would be very wise of them is to make sure that the real culprit is under suspicion early on in the film and then is absolved uh, or, or excused from, from being uh, cleared, basically, of the charges, something like that. And then it turns out to be the real killer in the end. That's a great technique, um, but uh, you know who knows what they'll do. Um, so Amanda Seyfried is seeing two different guys, one of whom she's supposed to marry and the other of whom uh, she is the one she really wants to be with because she's turned on by him. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't really know a lot about those actors. Uh, this is a very, very brief clip, so I really don't uh, have a lot to go on. Uh, it looks okay. It looks visually very striking. I like the music um, and I like some of the actors in it, but it's really, really hard to tell at this point whether or not this movie's going to be any good. Um, but I have confidence in the director, Catherine Hardwick. She's, uh, she's, she's decent. She's decent. So um, it's something to look forward to. And I would end up seeing it even if it got terrible reviews, just so I could look at her. Just so I could look at her. <laughs> That's how it is sometimes. Uh, you all who are Johnny Depp fans know what I mean by that, don't you? Yeah, I think you do. Johnny Depp's a very good actor. But face it, sometimes you just like looking at him, right? Yeah, I know I do. Handsome dude. So um, there you go. And uh, uh, Eyewitness 911, of course, is going to get two videos out of me, two for the price of one, which normally I wouldn't do. But I, since I'm going to be, you know, seeing the movie anyway, I might as well do a video on it when it comes out in March or April, sometime in the spring. Um, so uh, that's all I have uh, on this uh, clip for now. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that, sir. Uh, thanks very much uh, to all of you who are watching. Uh, and uh, yeah, take it easy. I'll catch you around.